it's like going to like the finest sushi restaurant in the world is that it's like a perfect experience, right? There's nothing that takes away from what you're doing. And then you don't realize it until the end, like, oh, you know, you didn't have to think about where were the chopsticks. You didn't have to think about when the next piece came. You didn't have to think about any of these other things. So a lot of our page speed experience is like that too, where yeah. we want to remove all of these small impediments to having the best experience. Welcome to the e-commerce podcast with me, your host, Matt Edmondson. The e-commerce podcast is all about helping you deliver e-commerce wow. And to help us do just that, today I am chatting with today's guest, William Belk, on how to boost your bottom line with page speed optimization. We're going to get into that probably a few other little bits and bobs, knowing William. Uh, but before we do, before we dive into our conversation, let me share our podcast pick. Oh yes, some previous episodes that I think you're gonna enjoy. So check out how SEO ranking can improve your customer experience with the fantabulous Nick Truman, who is an absolute legend and actually a good friend. So do check that out. Also, fixing the biggest problem with Shopify. Uh, I have no traffic, but sales was a great episode with uh, Elle McCann. Still the biggest problem people have with Shopify. Uh, they've got traffic, but no sales. Now you can access our podcast pick and our entire podcast archive for free on our website, ecommercepodcast.net. Plus, if you sign up for our newsletter, we'll send you the links from our podcast pick along with the notes and any links from today's show with William. They all get delivered straight to your inbox at no cost to you, which is pretty amazing. We know it is. Now, the sponsor section, dun, dun, dun. Are you struggling to grow your e-commerce business? Do you feel like you're constantly spinning wheels trying to figure out what to focus on next? Well, I have been there and I know how frustrating it can be. That's why I am super excited about what the e-commerce cohort does. Uh, it's great to be a part of it um, and it is the sponsor of the show. Now, e-commerce cohort helps e-commerce businesses like yours deliver an exceptional customer experience that drives results. And to help you get started, uh, we've got a free resource for you called e-commerce cycles. Now, it's a mini course. It's not going to take you too long, but it's a mini course that walks you through our proven framework for building a successful e-commerce business. I'm going to show you the specific steps I take in my own e-commerce businesses so you can see exactly how to put those concepts into practice in your own business. And e-commerce cohort is built on this idea, this framework. So getting an understanding of that will help you determine whether or not cohort is good for you. And like I say, the training is completely free uh, and you can sign up right now at ecommercecycles.com. I say sign up, saying that out loud, doesn't make sense because you don't even need to put an email address in. It's right there. You just click play. Uh, but that's all there, ecommercecycles.com. So do go over there and access this free training and get started today. It's time to start delivering e-commerce wow to your customers with the help, of course, of e-commerce cohort. OK, so that's the show sponsor. Who is today's guest. Well, today we are chatting with William Belk, who is a software developer and SEO expert with over 20 years of experience. He is the creator of five very popular Shopify apps and the founder of Page Doctor, a free tool for testing page speed and optimizing performance. He has also written rapid reviews. We're gonna get into all of this. Oh yes, yeah. so uh, William and I are gonna chat about how to boost your online success. We're gonna be talking about these Shopify apps, why he's written them, what they do, and how they're gonna help you. So William, welcome to the show, man. Great to have you, how are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I'm so, so impressed by your intro, it's Radio One quality. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Right, actually, in the UK, there is uh, there's a there's a radio station called Radio One, BBC Radio I One. Know. Right. I know, okay. Yeah. Well, cool. Did you also know that there is a DJ, a Radio One DJ called Matt Edmondson, uh, which is slightly oh, scary. I've heard him. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I've heard him. Yeah. Yeah. So you know who I'm talking about, and our, our surname is spelled almost almost identically. Um, and on Twitter. 
uh, I st- <laughs> it is funny on Twitter. I still get people connecting with me on Twitter asking me if I can play certain songs on the radio, which I find quite funny. That's so, cool. um, yeah. <laughs> so he must get, uh, I've never actually met uh, my namesake on the radio, uh, but he must get the, um, the bizarrest of requests about e-commerce <laughs> coming through on his Twitter feed. It's like, what is I hope this? So. Yeah, I know, yeah, I that hope would so, be yeah. funny. Yeah, that would be really funny. So, well, thank you for the compliment. Uh, and if BBC Radio is listening, I am happy to be uh, probably a Radio 2. I think I'm more Radio 2 <laughs> than Radio 1. But, uh, yep. <laughs> so whereabouts in the world are you? How come you listen to Radio 1? I uh, just, you know, get around. I get around. Yeah. So I spend some time over there. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. It's a bit like that um, Oh, that song, you, I Get Around, I Get Around. Uh, who's it? The Beach Boys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've got that song now playing in the back of my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you're if you're listeners in Europe, imagine me. I'm probably like that. You know, at the beach surfing. So, yeah. so I'm currently in LA. I split my time between Las Vegas and Los Angeles. So okay, nice. Yeah. And then in LA. LA, right by the beach, I try to surf every once in a while when I'm yeah, not it's working. It's got to be a hard life. Code, so. It's got to be. A yeah, hard it's life. pretty tough. Pretty tough. We had a great guest on the show called Jared Mitchell, um, who's based down in San Clemente, which is, oh, yeah. I think, about 45 minutes south of L.A. He's always surfing as well. You two should hook up. He's big into e-com. Uh, he's oh, big cool. into surfing. Yeah. And I've actually stayed at his house. Great guy, actually. And he's been on the show, so do check out his episode, Jared Mitchell. Really, really cool guy. So you're in L.A. You've got some really interesting posters on the wall behind you. You know, uh, uh, for those that are watching yeah. the video, um, very colourful, very graphic sort of, uh, are they record album covers? Are they, what's going on on the wall behind you there? Yeah, there's a few few album covers up there. Got your got your new order. Ah, yeah. well, it's got the world in got, motion, uh, right? Yeah, a couple <laughs> couple other gems, gems up there. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, fantastic. So is that what you do when you're not busy sort of uh, Shopify app development? You're, you're listening to vinyl LPs? Ah, uh, you know what? Sadly, I think about ten years ago, I got rid of most of my records. No, it's Spotify's unbeatable. It's unbeatable. I yeah, you know, I still is, have but... I still have a bit of a collection, but what are you gonna do? You know, you're busy. And Spotify, I mean, Spotify's a good product. I can't can't lie. Less vibes, but good yeah, product, you know? it's interesting. You know, we have um we have a young lady who's who's started living with us for a few months. She's just. We've got a reasonably sized house, and so we take in, you know, waifs and strays every now and again. And um, there's this young lady living with us, uh, Jasmine. She's uh, in her early 20s, and I was walking past her room the other day um, because I was doing some renovation on the house, and she had the door open. And do you know what I saw on her desk, which really surprised me? I appreciate this has got nothing to do with e-commerce, but, you know, we've started down this road. Let's see what it takes us. Yeah, please, yeah. Um, E-commerce is boring, let's be honest. (laughs) Yeah. You, we, we talk about it because we have to, you know. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, uh, the 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 not so boring e-commerce podcast. Maybe I should just anyway. On Jasmine's desk uh, was a record player, a young twenty-two-year-old girl with a record player listening to vinyls. I was like, "What is going on? Uh, it doesn't yeah. make any sense." It's like I'd been thrown back to the nineteen eighties. <laughs> uh, yeah, she knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So page speed optimization, right? Uh, let's talk about that. Um, because, I, I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> we make this quip that e-commerce is boring. I imagine for most people listening to the podcast, they're going to be going, well, if e-commerce is boring, perhaps one of the most boring parts of e-commerce <laughs> <laughs> would be page speed uh, optimization. Especially yep. if I'm honest with you, William, I think probably most people don't understand it, right? Um, sure. We've all gone to Pable, uh, Pable, I don't know what that is, uh, Google PageSpeed Insights, put our web URL in, and it's come back with a number, which is usually not good, um, and told us, you know. Especially we, we... for Shopify, yeah. It's almost always not good, yeah. Well, this is this is part of the problem, isn't it, I suppose, and, and thinking about Shopify, because if you're on Shopify, um, I suppose how much control do you actually have over PageSpeed? Um. So that is somewhat of a trick question. So, <laughs> well, I'm glad there, I asked it early. I then you, you kind of open up Pandora's box, right? So mm. there's a few, a few issues. So a lot of people, 
a lot of people have trouble differentiating between like perceived page speed and rendering performance and like uh, the totality or like holistic page speed performance, right? Mm -hmm. So when we go to a tool like Google Page Speed Insights, it gives us so much information. And unless you're, I mean, even for me, I get lost in Google Page Speed Insights, right? Mm -hmm. So you get all of these different numbers. You don't really know what they mean. They have all these like vague, you know, CLS and then like other types of like you know, measures that we don't really understand. So that's kind of the beginning of the page speed problem in yeah. terms of like, you know, you have like a problem solution space. So the solution space for most people as it relates to page speed is really hazy and like gray and hard to understand. And then the problem with Shopify is that Shopify is so good and they have so many friendly tools. Everything's like one click, right? So everyone thinks that okay, I can set up a Shopify store and, you know, to, to run a Shopify store, you can run a $10 million a year store for like 300 bucks mm. and which is incredible. Yeah. But then in order to get our performance and rendering profile where we want, we actually have to invest time. So when you asked how much, you know, uh, how much control do we have? We have all the control we want, but if we assume that we're just going to do one click everything to fix, you know, our page speed problem. It's just not going to happen. It's not realistic. Right. So then, you know, I say, I have kind of a saying is you're only as slow or excuse me, you're only as fast as your slowest app. Right. So a lot of these stores have 10, 20, 30 apps installed in their store. And then that's one of the biggest problems is that those, those apps are allowed to inject scripts and assets into our stores and then that becomes like this mountain of you know background requests and css and job like additional javascript resources and delayed stuff so then um you know we end up if we if we use the traditional like shopify one click mentality then we end up really deep in this hole this performance mm. hole. So everyone says like, oh, Shopify is slow. Shopify is not slow, you know? But if we add all these third-party applications and we, we just click them and think that they're not gonna have an effect in, for a performance, of, a performance effect, then we're kind of like misguided in that way. So then a lot of what I focus on with my apps and just everything I do is performance. So, you know, I started uh, a tool that I think you've seen, which is pagedoctor.com. So it's a free page analysis tool. And then yep. I was tired of using Google PageSpeed Insights because it takes me so long to figure out. So I built my own page testing tool that gives me like that first pass analysis of what I want to look at, which mm -hmm. is like the big stuff. So most shop owners can make massive strides just by fixing fundamental problems. So like they'll have like maybe 10 lines of code that are, just done improperly that yeah. cost cost them 600 milliseconds or like 0.6 seconds or something. Yeah. Um, so that's like a good start. And then the, the next step is just to evaluate all the apps that we're using to try to figure out which ones are hurting us the most. So like a lot mm -hmm. of people have apps installed on their store that they're not using and they don't even realize that those apps still have like a direct line to inject scripts into their store. Yeah. So like a good example would be like product reviews apps. Sometimes people try three or four different product reviews apps and then they just pick the one that they like and then they forget to uninstall the ones that they don't like. So like Yotpo as an example will inject, I don't know, 120, 140K into your page, like 10 to 15 requests when you're yeah. not even using it. Wow. So you may not even, it may be installed, but you don't have the modules installed on your site they'll still just be lighting your site up with all these background requests. And that all takes browser resources and slows everything. Like it slows stuff down that people don't even realize, like scrolling, yeah. you know, um, resizing, or like every time you do something cool or movement based on the page, then the browser has to reinterpret the whole entire page again. So then the more stuff that we have, you know, you get that kind of like just that, that non-Japanese or German precision feel, you know, you mm -hmm. get that 
kind of like vending machine feel. <laughs> yeah. It's a good way to describe it. And it is, it is interesting. I mean, you mentioned this, you know, um, that the amount of people that have redundant apps on their Shopify store. Um, I, 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 I don't remember ever talking to somebody about their Shopify site and they didn't have redundant apps on there on their store. You know, they've not gone through and done that. I need to take these out. And so what I'm hearing you saying, William, is actually by taking those out, just do, by doing that due diligence, this is before you've even checked on the ones you actually do use, you're going to increase your page speed. And increasing your page speed is, um, well, let's get into that actually. Let's start a bit, a bit more headlines. So page speed optimization is something I don't think many people talk about. Everyone talks about conversion rate optimization and all this sort of fancy stuff. So we don't talk much about page speed optimization, partly because I think a lot of people think it's outside of their control. Um, so what is page speed optimization and why, why should I care um, about, you know, as a, a store owner, surely, my iPhone and my desktop now, they're super uber powerful. Do I even, do I even, I mean, broadband is what, gigabit now? So do I, do I even need to care? Sure. So we can kind of address that in a couple of different ways, that question. Mm -hmm. We can talk about the simple stuff. So like the measures based stuff or the numbers based stuff, right? So if we improve page speed, we reduce bounce rate. So like customers that come and just leave because they get frustrated or bored or whatever. Right. So they won't each, each visitor is not like us. So we have our own, if we have our own store or clients, we are not the target customer. Yeah. Right. So that's a good place to start thinking about page speed is that we look at our shop 20 times a day or you know if we're like marketer we're always looking at the landing pages if we're a developer we're always looking at the features so the measures based stuff is all really our bottom line so if if and it also depends on 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 store size so how much like traffic and revenue we're mm -hmm. doing but let's say we're you know whatever a five million dollar shop one million to five million so improved page speed reduces bounce rate, it increases conversion rate, it can help with SEO, you know, it kind of, that's a hard rabbit hole to go down. But generally speaking, PageSpeed does help SEO across mm -hmm. the board and SEO ranking. And we know that PageSpeed improves page quality score for ad buying. So that's the big thing. So if we're buying a lot of, a lot of ads, we want our pages to be as fast as possible because we're competing with other people. So when, when Google or different ad networks or Facebook, they'll check our, they'll check our pages and give our page an ad quality score. Obviously, you know, key phrases and content have a big part of that, mm -hmm. but page speed is also a factor in that. So, you know, if Google has two pages with identical, you know, practically identical content, who do they want to give that ad to? They want to give it to the faster page, right? Yeah. So those are like the easy, those are the easy things, right? But then we have, you know, page speed almost as like a spiritual component, right? So Ooh, okay, yep. If we if we have because it's, it's hard to it's hard to think about, right? So every single millisecond of our experience with every page is affected by the page rendering performance. So like not just the page speed. So the page speed is one thing. So we have like page speed, which is how fast it loads, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have the general performance of the web page. So if we install all of these apps that are putting stuff in the background, background requests, and then they're injecting these big giant blobs of HTML. So one thing that you see in Page Doctor and Google Page Speed Insights is like the DOM element, the number of DOM elements, right? So if we have 500 DOM elements versus 5,000, and I see 5,000 all the time. Every time the browser does things, it has to, a lot of times it'll have to go through every single element in the entire tree. So the, in the browser, it's just like a giant object. And then we have nodes on the object. So every time we redraw the page, then we have to go in, the browser has, the browser's brain or like the, 
the processor has to know where everything is and go through everything and make sure nothing changed because everything in your in your browser has like a size mm -hmm. you know it'll have like some sort of container it'll have like an x y um it'll have all these styles on it you know oh does it need a border does it not so everything that we do to the page that increases that cognitive load on the browser affects everything so when we scroll down the page like i said we have that like vending machine feel right yeah. Versus like that really smooth, like ball bearing feel. So all these apps that we're installing, it's hard for people. They don't think that every single time someone scrolls, that's part of, you know, that, that, um, I don't know. I, I don't know other way to call it, but spiritual, it's like this experience that you can't explain mm -hmm. and you don't know why you just had the best experience ever. It's like going to like the finest sushi restaurant in the world is that sometimes it's about it's like a perfect experience, right? There's nothing that takes away from what you're doing. And then you don't realize it until the end, like, oh, you know, you didn't have to think about where were the chopsticks. You didn't have to think about when the next piece came. You didn't have to think about any of these other things. So a lot of our page speed experience is like that too, where yeah. we want to remove all of these small impediments to having the best experience that we can have. And then that is kind of like, that's what creates this nice, nice customer experience, right? Yeah. No, I, I get that. I, I, I like your restaurant analogy, actually. Um, you, you don't always, the, the consumer doesn't go to a website thinking, all oh, this has got a really good page speed optimization system going on here. But it does go to the website going, I really enjoy being on that website. Uh, it's just that unconscious bias, isn't it? So... If page speed optimization is primarily about load time, right? And there's all these things that, so for Shopify, it's easy because we can pick on the apps. If it's not a Shopify site, Google page speed um, insights tends to pick on JavaScript, especially on use JavaScript and a few other bits and bobs, isn't it? And it, it, it picks all these things out. Um, so we've, whether we're on Shopify or not, we've got some unused code on our website that we just need to not be lazy and clean up, or at least the, the web developers need to not be lazy and clean up. So if web speed optimization is predominantly about loading my speed as <laughs> about loading my site as fast as possible, is there like is there like a minimum ideal time? Have I got to hit like a three second load, a two second load, a six second load? What's the, what, what am I trying to aim for here? Yeah, I, I think that the, that's one of the problems with Google PageSpeed Insights is that number, you know, the score that we get is mm -hmm. no one has any idea what that means, right? <laughs> like we just have absolutely no idea. So even yeah. an idea in, in your example where you mentioned we have different, uh, network speeds, right? So half a second versus one and a half seconds. We have no idea. We have no context to assign to that. So then we mm -hmm. have our own browser at home, whatever internet connection we have, we might have like a fiber connection. We might have a slow, you know, DSL connection. So what I like to focus on, so the, I brought up page doctor before, so, mm -hmm. which is at page doctor.com free page analysis tool. Um, I just focus on the simple stuff. So like, do we have JavaScript errors on the page? Oh, drop my pen. So do we have <laughs> JavaScript errors on the page? Um, that's a simple one that we can look for that we don't need to assign any numbers to, right? Mm -hmm. And then the other one is like, do we have blocking JavaScript tags? That's a huge one, right? So when our page loads, a lot of times the way that the page is loaded, the developer needs a library like like jQuery. Mm -hmm. So then they'll say, okay, I don't want anything to happen until after this library is loaded. And what that means is that the, the browser hits that line of code and says, okay, this is an essential resource. And then it loads every single bit of it into memory, processes it, and then moves on. So right. blocking requests are like a huge thing, right? And then your example of all these different assets um, so you like the, we want to reduce the number of everything and then sequence it in a way that makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, our apps, um, look for apps that are more performant is like a simple one. Right. So, um, so my, my product reviews app for Shopify, which is called rapid reviews, 
it is the most hardcore performance oriented app that you can get for a product reuse. No one is even in my galaxy of existence. And then this is a hard thing for people to explain, but my whole entire app is one request with 12K payload. That's it. And that gives mm. you questions, um, obviously reviews, questions, deep search on everything, filtering, all of that. And so I can do it in one request with 12K. It's possible. I do it. It's it, That's what my app does. So then if you compare that to an app like Yotpo, so Yotpo will sometimes make 25 to 30 requests on your page, 300 to 500K to load less features than I have. Um, so then, you know, all of these things are possible. So what we want to do is look at all the fundamentals. So first we started the code, you know, JavaScript errors, blocking script tags, how much CSS are we loading? So mm -hmm. what you said is people are loading a lot of stuff that they don't use. That's like a massive problem. So you have like your core theme CSS. It'll be like theme.css, right? It'll be whatever, 400K of CSS when you only need like 40 lines for your homepage or something like that. So you can break up all these pages or you can break up all your CSS mm -hmm. and load less. So every CSS file is the same exact thing. When the browser hits that CSS, it knows that it's essential for everything below it or around it, puts it into memory, then moves on. So then if we have 20 apps that do this too, so the 20 apps load all the background processes and then they load all their CSS assets as like style tags. So they just inject them in the browser hits that and says like, Oh, okay. Now I have to figure out the page again. Right. Um, so these are like the, you have to just work from the bottom and then go up and then images are another one. So like, are we lazy loading our images? Um, you know, what do the, you mean when you say lazy loading? So, that's a good question. How do I say? Um, so there's two two different ways to lazy load an image. So lazy load means as you scroll down the page. So on the page, we have the fold, mm -hmm. which is everything we can see when the browser opens or like the phone opens, Yep. which would be like the preliminary load screen area is the fold. So then anything below the fold, we want to defer for, for imagery specifically. We want to defer that until we scroll down and hit it. Mm -hmm. and there's two ways. There's old way which is generally using a library like lazy sizes, um, which is, you know, a third party dependency, you can call mm -hmm. it or a plugin dependency. And then the browsers now have a new way, which is a lazy or a loading attribute. So it's like loading equals lazy. So a lot of our themes are older, or we may have a website that's totally custom that was built three or four years ago. Um, I mean, you know how it is, right? Like if it's working, yeah. don't touch it. Right. So, uh, so we want to like lazy load our images. That's like a really simple one that we could do. Um, yeah. And then it takes the other thing that I encourage people to do is work with their developer, like d develop or excuse me, that's a bad word, but b build relationships with developers that you trust, right? Don't, you know, you could use Fiverr and find somebody for $5, which is, may work really well in some cases, but you want people that you can depend, you can depend on over time and that you trust and that are going to tell you the real deal and how, you know, how much effort it's going to take to get to where we want to be with our sites. Right. Yeah. Well, no, I, 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 it's interesting you mentioned about developers because I've always done this thing in the past where. Occasionally, I'll go and check our site on Google PageSpeed Insights. Now, I'll walk into the developers and I'll go, look, we've got a rubbish score. And the developers, the first thing they'll do is give me 10 reasons why PageSpeed Insights is wrong and why I should ignore them because of X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And so you, you can quickly get caught up in this um, Google's wrong, I'm right cycle, which I, as how, a how does that How does that work for people? Generally, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I'm, but it, I think it's interesting if you're a site owner and you're talking to your developer. Um, it's very hard to argue with a developer because they usually know more about coding than you do, um, and they can they can come up with all kinds of plausible sounding reasons as to why that doesn't really matter or that doesn't really matter over there. Um, and so I think it's sort of easily dismissed. It's a hard. 
Maybe it's just me. I, do you know what I mean? I, I, it's one of those where I think it's a hard thing to argue with a developer on PageSpeed Insights. Um, part of me thinks it's because the developers are actually genuinely quite lazy and don't want to, you know, it, it, I think optimizing for speed is not a sexy thing. Um, you know, we, we, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll push back on you a little bit. So maybe here's another way to think about it is that most brands, if we, if we look at Shopify specifically, everyone is so used to everything being done with one click. So like, think yeah. about how many apps there are now that uh, they, say, they say they can improve your page speed score by like 20 or 40. All you have to do is click the button and install the app, right? And most brand owners or marketers or, you know, budget allocators, if we want to call them, don't want to hear that it's going to take 15 hours to improve our page speed, mm. right? So I think some of the developers are probably conditioned to think that people are very, very cost, cost conscious. Yeah. So if they say, um, I mean, to go back, circle back a little bit, Google's page speed score is never wrong, right? It may be inconveniently low, <laughs> but it's never, it's it's never, never wrong. wrong. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then that's, that's one thing you can say is if you go to the developer and you say, Hey, we want to increase our page speed score. They may be actually giving, um, obviously some developers are not the best communicators and, and likewise with the marketers or brand owners, right? They kind of generally speak two different languages, right? So they mm -hmm. may be saying in a roundabout way, yes, I can help you with this page speed score, but I'm going to need, you know, two more full days of focusing on it. Or they can say, they might be telling you, hey, you've installed these garbage apps and I told you not to install them and I told you there were better ones, but you didn't listen. So now we have a score of 12 mm -hmm. on mobile. You know, so then part of it is building the trust with the developer and say, hey, I want to increase my page speed score because I want to spend less. You, know, you, can, you, can, you can do it two ways. One is I want you to help me because you are committed to excellence and you are an expert at what you do. So help me, tell me what, tell me what we really need to do. And then mm -hmm. you can also sell that to other people in the organization from the marketing side is like, I want to spend less on ads, right? Mm -hmm. I want to have the best customer experience that I can have as a brand owner or marketer or merchandiser, you know, e-commerce e merchandiser or whatever it is, and then build that type of relationship instead of saying, you know, oh, I'm going to focus on the number. And then the developer will be like, yeah, well, I don't know. It's fine. We have all these apps because the developer knows in certain cases that the, the store owner or the marketer, a lot of times they don't really listen, right? Mm -hmm. And they don't really want to have the conversation. They just want to say like, oh, it's bad. And then you'd be like, okay, cool. It's, you know, if you, we really want to get this, we're going to have to like rip out this app and then switch to this app. And then, okay, let's change the theme because this theme is garbage where we have all these like fade ins and fade outs. We have all these like effects. Okay. Well, can we remove this like carousel? This carousel has a, like a, a plug-in dependency. They'd be like, no, we have to have the carousel. Well, have you tested it? Do you know that it helps? No, but I like it. And the customers <laughs> like it. Well, did you check? Like, mm -hmm. do, are you sure that the customer loves the carousel? Or could you just have, like, could it have scroll instead of, like, the wacky button with the, like, zzz, you know? And then building a relationship or being open-minded as a brand owner really helps the developers help us, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I totally get that. And I, I like your wacky button with zzz, uh, sound effect. <laughs> Everybody knows it. You know, it's yeah, on yeah, every yeah. e-commerce page. And I guarantee you that that thing right there is like 100 or 200K of not very optimized JavaScript just to have something on a home page with like nine tiles that you can't see. You know, they're off to the right. You mm -hmm. know where they are. And then... Like, does customer even use that? And do you even want them to use that? Like, get them to a collection page, get them to the product page, allow them to buy. Don't mm. keep interrupting them, you like know, gimmicks. with all of these things. And then yeah. constantly saying as a brand owner, like, it has to be my way because I know everything. It's like, you don't even test anything. Like, 
most of these people are like, you know, all the different like psychological things, right? They're emotional, mm -hmm. they're insecure. I mean, I'm insecure about everything I do, right? Whenever somebody says something to me about my apps, I'm like, oh man, <laughs> like, do you know, how, you know how many hours I spent on this or all the different things, but it's, you know, it's like, unless we test it, you know, what do we know? Right? Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair enough. So the, um, so site speed, the, the ability to get something fast on the phone, you mentioned earlier that it is connected um, with the page quality score by ad buys. Now, um, the reason I, I want to dig into this a little bit is we have recently switched companies um, who do our Facebook ads. Okay, so our Facebook ad company has changed. And one of the first things they have said to us um, on one of our e -com sites is, your page speed is incredibly low and we're going to need to work on that. Um, and it's the first time an ad company has actually said to me, part of your problem is your page speed um, on that particular website. So I went away and checked the page speed and sure enough, he was right. It's insanely low. And I think um, it's not something that we've looked at for a year or two. And as things get added to the site and things change and evolve, the site's slows down and we now need to spend a bit of time revamping uh, that as it were. But I'm curious, um, you've mentioned it, the, the ads agency that we use, they've also mentioned it. What is it about page speed that makes uh, ads perform better, that's going to help us with our return on ad spend? Sure. So we talked a little bit about it. Um, we touched a little bit, I don't, uh, mm -hmm. we touched a little bit on it before, um, you know, our page speed affects bounce rate and engagement, right? So the slower our pages load, obviously the longer it takes for the customer to see it. And especially mm -hmm. when we're, when we're buying ads, these are the most fickle visitors. Yeah. These are the visitors that have the least time to donate to our cause, right? They don't have an existing or generally speaking, they don't have an existing relationship with our brand, especially when we're in growth mode, right? We're, mm -hmm trying to find new customers that we don't already know. Obviously, we want to say like, find people like whatever, and then we're not talking about retargeting. So retargeting, they've already been hit with an ad or they've somehow found our site or they saw us on Instagram. But these fresh visitors are incredibly, incredibly fragile, right? So a half a second extra page load time will just naturally increase our bounce rate. Mm -hmm. So bounce rate, this just means people that hit our page and leave without doing anything. And you know, that's a, that's a huge thing, right? So that's the, the faster the page load is the start of the engagement process for the customer, right? And so a good example of something like that would be like, so when, when someone comes to a product page, right? We have a lot of product pages have product reviews a lot of product reviews will show like the star rating, right? Five stars, mm -hmm. number of reviews. So that is like essential information for a visitor. So like when I, I, I mentioned my app before rapid reviews, mm -hmm. this is like another good example of why page speed is so important. So if we're buying ads, ton of ads, those visitors are landing on like a product page or maybe an optimized like product landing page. We want stars in the, visitor subconscious like immediately we can't wait a second or like you know yadpo or stamp maybe we're we're not loading those stars for like 1.4 2.2 seconds because they they make an initial request and then they'll make nine or ten or 15 background requests one of those requests eventually involves the star rating right mm -hmm. and so that's a good example where one we have the initial page load which is just like core theme setup, blocking script tags, all kinds of nonsense loaded to the page. And then we have, you know, our module like rendering. And especially if we have something as essential as like a third party module, like product reviews or star rating. Yeah. So the difference between one second subconscious is like, this is a subconscious thing. This is where we get into that kind of like the spiritual experience of the page. Yeah. All these things are happening that, you know, like these are hard to explain, but we know for a fact that when we land on like the shoe page and then the stars don't show up for like two seconds, 
we don't like that's hard to quantify but that's like an immediate thing in the subconscious of the visitor oh this is a five star product i want to see what people are saying it has yeah 250 product reviews so these are all the like there's almost a like a stair step that you can work through and then you can obviously if you're doing enough volume you can immediately connect that to how much your ads are costing and then how well the ads are performing right yeah that's really interesting it's really interesting and as you're talking i i can start to see now the you know the strategy which you've come across most on ads these days tends to be okay rather than sending an ad to a product page i'm going to send an ad to a specific landing page and that landing page is going to resonate with the ad it's going to make sense to the ad um it may be that i reverse the page so rather than putting the add to cart stuff at the top i'm going to put it at the bottom and you you know we're going to take you on a sales page journey and we're going to test that and we'll test a different thing but i'm also starting to see the benefits here because if you have a specific set landing page you can have that landing page load super quick can't you you can say right there's no necessary unnecessary javascript on this page we're just going to have the css for this landing page we're not going to embed the latest reviews, maybe the website, we, we call them cron jobs, will go through and it'll refresh them at midnight or something like that. But once you're on that page, man, everything is coming in, bang, super, super quick. And you can start to see why that as a strategy not only makes sense from a sales marketing point of view, but also from a page speed point of view, right? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And if people have the resources, if you ask the marketing team or the ad agency that you're working with, 10 times out of 10, they'll say, yep, that's our preferred angle. Like, yeah. oh, you, we can host the page for you and we can do whatever we want. Perfect. You know? Yeah. Because no, you, that's interesting. again, that's like a resource allocation issue as well. Right? Like the same with talking to our developer and we, we go to our developer and we complain that, you know, our mobile Google page speed insight score is nine. And then, <laughs> then you know like if the developer say oh cool can i put 40 hours on this problem perfect you know mm -hmm. same with the marketing agency oh yeah we can just host these for you and you'll you know by the way though that's going to cost you another six thousand dollars a month yeah. in order for us to do it the right way you know but yeah it all makes a difference right and especially again the problem with some of these the the era that we're in now you know, even we, we can even touch on the, the, the AI component is that people are saying, oh, there's like, no one's going to write code anymore and everything's going to do everything for us and all these different things. We're, we're already so spoiled as e-commerce, you know, brand owners or developers, we're so spoiled. And then, you know, we're going to get to that next level where, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really like kind of a wild time. But we always have to yeah. we have to keep investing resources in mm. becoming better, right? Because that's like previously it would cost you what you can do on Shopify today for three hundred dollars a month in two thousand and eight would have cost you two million dollars a year mm. just in development budget for what you can do on Shopify today for three hundred dollars a month, right? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, technology moves on, doesn't it? It's such a rapid pace. And I think this is part of the problem we had um, with, uh, well, the problem we had with our website is because technology has moved on. Our website's probably two years old. Um, and we've added things like we had Trustpilot for reviews, which we no longer use. We've taken Trustpilot off. We had um, a referral system on there. And all of these things, when you added them together, just created a massive slowdown uh, in speed on the website, um, an unnecessary slowdown. It's interesting you you contrast your rapid reviews with Yotpo and and just the sheer size and speed of yours is very different to Yotpo, which makes me think, well, why have Yotpo done it the way that they've done it? Because they've, they've got a much bigger development budget, right? They've got much deeper pockets. Surely they should have done this right from day one. Why is it that they they don't do that. And I, I don't know the answer, William, if I'm honest with you. Um, but <laughs> I mean, I, because it's hard and it, it involves compromise. Mm. Right. That's the problem is that they, you know, this is not to say that their product isn't good. It solves a lot of problems. It probably solves too many problems. Mm. Right. So like I have customers come to me and say, well, God power stamp to have this like crazy masonry layout. I say, that's fine. Like good for them. 
Mm -hmm. right? If you want to live in my world and be the most hardcore and be the fastest, you come use my app. Yeah. Right. If you want to, if you want to, if your exchange is, or your barter is, you know, 400 K for that versus 12 K for what I can give you. And you will have to make some small compromises then, you know, come up, come to my side. Yeah. That's interesting. As, as I'm listening to you speak, William, I, I tell you the picture that I have in my head. Uh, is the t is the show um it used to be called i mean still in theory it's called top gear but with you know jeremy clocks and richard hammond tv show the the grand sure. tour i think it's called now on amazon and one of the things they do with race cars uh the first thing they do is they rip out all the seats they rip out all the unnecessary weight right and this is what i'm hearing when you compromise it's like you can either go stupid fast or you you know you'd like the rolls royce with the crazy heavy seats um, or we can rip out some of that weight, which we're not really using at this stage because I'm just taking one guy around a track. Uh, I can compromise on the stuff that I'm not really using. I can go faster. Um, that really helps me uh, and my my simple brain. William, I'm not going um, <laughs> to no, I mean, you. it's not to say that you want to be like so rigid that you don't have a great user experience, right? Mm -hmm. But like it, it, the example was if we're buying a lot of ads, okay. So we're going to have, we're going to, we're going to, let's say, we're going to accept the penalty of half a second of load time. Or, mm. you know, if we use Yodpo, you know, sorry to pick on Yod Yodpo, but their performance profile is one of the worst. Yeah. It's offensively bad. Like, <laughs> and I say this just as someone who cares about page speed and like, mm. I'm committed to excellence and it's horrible, right? So I think they have, like, if we just talk about number of DOM nodes, they probably have almost 10x. They inject 10x the number of, like, page elements as Rapid Reviews does. Mm. This is something that's hard to explain. You know, it's it's hard to help people understand. But all that's, like, this massive cognitive load on the browser, right? Mm. And so, you know, like your example of the race car, we don't want to have a seat that's, like, hard to sit in that's so light, right? We still want the race car to look awesome. But you know, if we use like a brand like, I don't know, like Singer, they do custom Porsches, right? Mm -hmm. So they're kind of walking that line between beautiful, elegant, efficient design and like massive performance. Yeah. So that's kind of where we are in like the, the race car example, or, you know, if we use like a Porsche GT3. So we have that, we're walking that line between like brutal performance and elegance. You know, and that's where we want to exist, right? So a lot of that stuff that we see out there, most, I am not a psychologist. I'm not even an amateur psychologist, but my understanding is that many people make their decisions based on like fear and comfort, mm -hmm. right? So the, they see a product that they have today and then all that they see by making it, like the switching cost for them emotionally is what they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. not what they're going to gain. So then they can look at something, oh, as a marketer, I made all these decisions and I told these people, put this here, put that there. I want this carousel. I want all these like fade-ins and oh, if I click on this button, it has to it has to move up or move over a little bit. Oh, I want this parallax everything. Yeah, parallax, right? So then a page speed expert will come in and look at their libraries and be like, yeah, this is junk. Mm. Like you're blowing it. So then we're going to have to rip all this stuff out. And then the brand owner says, well, like, but I made all those decisions. So then I'm afraid to make that change because it makes me feel vulnerable and insecure and like sad, obviously, because I'm the same way. Yeah. So then they, they really approach it from a standpoint of like fear of loss as opposed mm. to inspirational gain. Like, okay, cool. We're going to make this page hardcore. Maybe that'll increase our conversion rate by... I don't know, 0.4%. 0.4% is huge if yeah. we have, you know, a $5 million ad budget. Yeah. Well, every little helps, right? Uh, as the great British supermarket tells us. Listen, William, <laughs> it's, um, it's a fascinating conversation. I like the singer analogy. It was much better than my car analogy. Um, <laughs> Which is great. Listen, I'm, I'm aware of time, man. And if people want to reach out to you, if they want to connect with you, if you want to find out more about Rapid Reviews, Page Doctor, all that sort of good stuff, what's the best way to do that? 
Sure, the easiest is to go to williambelk.com. And I have all my stuff listed there. Um, I do quite a bit of writing on Medium. And you can find a link. Everything's on williambelk.com. But you can... My Twitter's not that interesting, to be honest. But uh, <laughs> you can follow me there. And then uh, Medium, I, I really like Medium as a platform. Mm -hmm. I like to write when I can. And then, um, yeah, and, and as far as my apps go, if you are on Shopify and, you know, check out my apps, reach out to me. Yeah. You can reach me directly. Like, I'm not hard to find. I try to be as involved with all my stuff as I can be and, you know, help people out because, I don't know, I like I like building stuff and, you know, I like helping people. And, yeah, it's it's a good good thing for me to be doing. So, yeah, reach out to me directly. You know, maybe yeah, we can... Um, we can make some some pages faster. Fantastic. Be ideal. Yeah. Absolutely. That's awesome, man. So we will, of course, link to William's information in the show notes, which you can get along for free with the transcript at ecommercepodcast.net, or it will be coming direct to your inbox if you signed up for our very fast newsletter. <laughs> uh, William, listen, uh, really enjoyed the conversation, man. And um, very good timing for us as we're having this uh, conversation internally about how we increase page speed. So uh, oh, very, very well timed. So brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us, buddy. Yeah, thank you for having me. It was so fun. No, it's great. Great. Huge thanks again to William for joining me today. Also, a big shout out to today's show sponsor, the e-commerce cohort. Remember to check out their free online training free yes free at ecommercecycles.com also be sure to follow the e-commerce podcast wherever you get your podcast from because we've got yet more great conversations lined up and i don't want you to miss any of them no i don't and in case no one has told you yet today dear listener you are awesome yes you are it's just a burden you have to bear you've been created awesome it's a burden i have to bear it's a burden william has to bear it's a burden you've got to bear as well. Now, the e-commerce podcast is produced by Orion Media. You can find our entire archive of episodes on your favorite podcast app. The team that makes this show possible is Sadaf Bain on Estella Robin and Tanya Hutzelak. Our theme song was written by Josh Edmondson. And as I mentioned, if you'd like to read the transcript or show notes, head over to the website, ecommercepodcast.com. Net. That's it from me. That's it from William. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastic week wherever you are in the world. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>